virtual learning, we use Zoom in three different main ways in my classroom. So the first way is the whole group. So it is for everyone. It's first thing in the morning. It's a way to unite and connect and have a nice morning brain smart start group time. So that's like kind of the traditional, I guess, when you think of group time, that's that morning circle. The second type of group times we do is small group. So that is when a few of my children have been paired up to work with another friend and we work on different skills and lessons and learnings together. One of those friends may have an IEP, one of them may not, but it really works on a lot of that social piece, that turn taking, that collaboration. And then that third group time is the one-on-one -on -one sessions. And those are for friends that need very specific targeted instruction. My one-on-one -on -one friends are the ones that really need a lot of assistance and help to stay engaged and to work on very specific tasks and that they need a lot of repetition and practice of skills. So since we have begun our virtual learning journey together, there's been three core elements that I've structured the classroom environment around with my paraprofessionals. The first is the importance of relationships and connections, not only amongst the students, but along the families as well. The second one is to have those hands-on playful activities, having children bring toys and materials to sessions and really learning in that hands-on engaging way that we would learn if we were in school together. And then the third one is emphasizing those rules. So being safe, being kind, being helpful, and how those are things that they can do not only when we're on Zoom school sessions, but at home as well. And how can they do that? and be successful. So how many yeah. friends teach this full Zoom? Five. 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 Oh yeah, look at this participation. Five friends. Now Alana, look in our jar. How many friends stayed home? One. One, and no. do you remember that friend's name? Kate. Kate. You're right, okay. Kate is that one friend. The first is all about those relationships and connections. I mean, primarily, we are all about building that school family and creating the relationships and connection with not just like the teachers and the kids, but the kids really connecting with each other, our families getting involved. When everyone signs on, I always say hi to my friends, of course, but we also say hi to family members. And I mean, it is like my favorite thing that I have kids that like greet grandparents of other kids which is so beautiful and it's about that school family which is not just our little class it's the families of those children it's it's a huge celebration of that and it shows it's not even just that they're signing on to see us they're signing on to see their friends and they're signing on to see the grandparents whoever it is but they're all getting to know each other and their names so we are still working on connections and relationships and how to build that and putting that at the heart and soul of everything that we do and just taking the time to really reach out with families and continue to have their involvement because without them, we could not do what we're doing. I mean, they have been so flexible and understanding and collaborative, um, making sure as best as they can to be present. A couple of the other students had uh, smaller siblings that Miss Rebecca and Miss Amanda welcomed them into the classroom, you know, and let them participate. And it just really made things a relaxed atmosphere, a family atmosphere, you know, and uh, I, I think it made it a whole lot better. It was really beautiful. Something else that we've done to build relationships is we celebrate. I mean, I always say preschool is a big old celebration. We go out and we deliver a little birthday present and we post it to Dojo so that the families can comment happy birthday. So keeping those type of things still fun and playful and highlighting friends has been really helpful to build relationships their faces and things like that are, are, are everywhere. So they not only see each other on a screen, but they'll see each other's faces and names like throughout our lessons and activities. And my hope is to focus their attention to actually look on the screen and see if their friend is here or not. And they know, they know everyone's name. They know if they're here or not. They know to wish well. And, and wish well is something that is really near and dear to my heart. So whenever a child is not there, we emphasize that whether kids are together or apart, they're always in each other's hearts. So something else we do to build relationships is we wish well. So this little friend was not here at circle time and our friends knew that we had to wish them well and they put out the, their well wishes to their friends. So from the moment you start to the moment you end, it is all about building relationships. Um, but those are just some ways we, that we do it in the virtual classroom. My baby's in my lap. My baby's in my lap. This is my doll and baby. 
they are in my lap. The second element is hands-on playful activities and learning. I have to say like my teaching from the spring to now looks totally different and it's totally improved because rather than being so focused on like pulling things up and having things on a screen, I have toys and the kids have the same toys and we're able to play cooperatively and take turns and they have things in their hands. It's meaningful. It's engaging. It's playful. It's exciting. It sort of came as a directive from the district. Try to teach as if you were in front of the classroom. Try to make it more um, personal that the teacher is the focus and not all of the videos. Um, children can access a computer, parents can access a computer, they can put on a Go Noodle or they can put on a YouTube video, but they can't put Miss Rebecca on at eight o'clock at night. So what is it that we can do to support that? So we actually put a box together for all the students so that everybody had the same. I was really, really grateful for it. It's a big box. I don't know if you can see real well, but there's pictures basically going on throughout the day, whole group sessions, small group. We have the morning group mm -hmm. and then schedule, and this is teacher time, small group. This is their packet that went along with their whole group uh, to go with hello. And then the lips. And the lips were for giving, wishing, I wish you well, giving kisses to those that maybe weren't present at school. Tongue depressors. A whiteboard. Yeah, like, crayons. There was like number lines and, and letters. So everything that you, would you know, would expect the in the classroom, they sent, which was really, really nice. In my heart, I do think that children do need to be active, and I wish it were my only idea, but it was a district initiative across all grade levels. They really wanted more engagement and less children logging on and just watching a video. Instead of being passive, it's so engaging and interactive. Like they have the toys in front of them, they can manipulate. Um, and we are getting such great responses. She kept them very engaged. You know, they all wanted to participate, so she did a very good job of that. Typical things that kids would be involved in, whether it's getting dressed, giving them opportunities to choose different songs for greetings in the morning, allow them to get up and dance and, and move around. So they kept it interesting and engaging, and I thought that was very good. I was really anxious about it. I was scared. I was used to teaching in like one way and having all my visuals on a screen. And I was like, what is going to happen? And I would say it's definitely more difficult to manage. I mean, my room, it's full of toys. I mean, I have bins with different visuals, but the engagement has been so amazing to watch kids with actual materials play, laugh, and learn together. So that's been awesome. It's natural. That's what we do when we're in the classroom is we take toys off a shelf and that's how we work with kids. So I feel like we are taking the old school natural approach to teaching online, but I have noticed a huge success with it and difference. It's also really based on like, what are kids going to like and what are they not going to like? And how can we embed that into our sessions and work on their goals? So at the beginning, before like we really started meeting, I asked parents, I was like, what are your child really like to do? And, you know, they answered things like Play-Doh and water play and cars and people and puzzles. So I really take the time to think about what do they have? Like what, what materials went out? How can I use those? And then what things do they like, like toys that they have at home that then I can bring to the screen and we can work on those together? And how can I convey that to families in an easy way, which is usually I send like a newsletter out with, this is for the week what you need. And I take pictures of all the materials so they see exactly what they need and what's expected. Like I'll say what you can go in and get out of your box, like open it up, like and take that out and you'll need that all week. So I try to lay it out, especially because I have friends multiple friends that go to grandparents' house, so they don't have the stuff there. Like, so parents pack their book bag at the beginning of the week so that all the stuff for that week is in their book bag so they can just get it from school. So if Monday we're working on literacy, they'll have their alphabet board page out and you know we might do alphabet soup. So they'll get a, I have it with me because we did it today, but they got a pot. They ask the kids to get a big spoon, a big wooden spoon, whatever they could find and a pot and pretend that they were stirring up their own alphabet soup. And uh, the teachers would have their alphabets in the pot that they had and they'd pull out a letter and they'd ask the kid, you know, what letter is this? And you know, one, she would pick one of the kids, they would say it and then she'd 
put it to the side and stir the soup again and pull out another letter. He likes making stuff, so mm -hmm. he loved it. They help me stir, and then we can pull, scoop out a letter and like review its name and its sound, and they can point to it on their board. So it's things like everyday items, things they like to play with, that we have them bring to the screen and then we play. I mean, we always say that play is how children learn and we believe it and we see it. Like during these sessions, we get tons of language, we get requesting, we get making shapes, we get writing letters. Of course, for my students that have IEPs, really intentional planning has gone into every single session to make sure we are hitting IEP goals and working on them. Again, I cannot praise the families enough for having the materials there. They're so receptive to it all. But it's been a great partnership. Is it appropriate, you know, all the time for children to just be sitting and watching a screen? Like how interactive is that? But having the materials, following directions, playing with us, it just feels so natural and developmentally appropriate. And but I've really noticed a lot of growth and engagement from the students. It's been a shift in my mindset of what I've done from the spring. I was being a online teacher. And now this year, I'm not teaching on a screen. I'm teaching through a screen. Because we can be safe and we can be kind and we can be helpful all the time. All right. So give your grown up a high five, a kiss, a hug, mm. tell them thank you. The third focus of my teaching is in our school family rules to be safe, be kind, be helpful. And what's so great about those rules are they're universal. You need to be safe, be kind, be helpful at your house. You need to be safe, be kind, be helpful at school Zoom. And you need to be safe, be kind, be helpful when we go into the building and that responsibility might look different, but it's still the same. So really like teaching our children what that looks like. We've been able to like slowly introduce classroom jobs. So for one of our friends, it is their job to make the commitment to have our class commit to either are we going to be safe? Are we going to be kind? Are we going to be helpful today? And then we talk about what that looks like. We talk about ways they can do it at home. I'm going to pull this down because we also started a kindness tree, which is something we do in school, but why not do it in virtual school and at home? So we've talked about what it means to be kind, and we have highlighted ways that they're being kind and helpful at home and on school Zoom and adding it to our kindness tree. So to be safe looks like things like that you have your listening ears, your eyes are watching, your arms are at your side, your feet are down below. And this is where our noticing language comes in. Oh, that's so safe. Ways that we can be kind is taking that deep breath for someone that's having a hard time or when you need to have a deep breath, asking for help or helping someone else. Sometimes using those quiet voices, which is very important on Zoom. And then to be helpful, is things like cleaning up, which is really hard. It's hard to clean up, but it's a, way, a great way to be helpful, and we get to practice that a lot in preschool. For me and Noah, I found he wanted to be helpful with me doing the dishes, doing the laundry, doing everything, you know, and so I like that. You know, I want him to be able to do those things on his own, so for him to be interested in it now, I thought it was cool. So I always, at my sessions in Zoom, say like, you guys were all so helpful today. Your eyes were on your teachers and your friends, your ears were listening, you were following along. That was helpful that you participated in group time. The great thing is, is that every single child, no matter which teacher they have, is being taught to be safe, being kind, and being helpful. And I think it's so important now more than ever as we make another shift because we did get news that we are heading back to on site very soon to start teaching in person. And I feel excited, lots of anticipation to finally be back with my friends, but also big emotions and a little bit anxious too. It's funny because I feel like, oh, I'm like finally kind of in the swing of things. And now we're shifting again where we're going to have to adjust all new things all over again. But obviously we're all going to take a breath and give grace and do the best we can um, to make it the best experience possible.